Most of us saw it coming, but it has been made official that Jay Woodcroft and Dave Manson have been fired by the Edmonton Oilers. The team has struggled out of the gate this season, going 3-9-1 before the coaching change. They lost the season opening game 8-1 to the Pacific Division rivals Vancouver Canucks, and they have not been able to find any consistency on the score sheet so far, despite dominating teams in shot attempts, scoring chances, and expected goals every night, it seems. Their goaltending has crippled them at every turn, going back to the playoffs last spring, and there doesn't seem to be any help in sight in that department. What is frustrating me as an Oilers fan is that Dustin Schwartz, the current Oilers goaltending coach, has survived eight seasons and counting and the firing and hiring of five different head coaches in Edmonton since he joined the team in 2015. Under Dustin Schwartz, the only goaltender that didn't seem to regress was Mike Smith, and I'm willing to bet it's because Smith probably told the goalie coach off on more than a few occasions. Cam Talbot, Miko Koskinen, Stuart Skinner, and Jack Campbell have all seen their play regress heavily under Schwartz the longer they seem to play, and it is baffling that he still has a job as the coach in Edmonton. But what frustrates me even more as an Oilers fan is getting to watch Ken Holland be part of his third coaching change since he became general manager. He hired Dave Tippett, and then he brought in Jay Woodcroft, and now he has hired Chris Knobloch. How does a general manager get to make three coaching changes in five years without also falling on the sword and getting fired? Most general managers get to make their initial coaching hire and then have one replacement before they eventually will get axed. After two coaches, the blame has to shift to the person responsible for constructing the underperforming roster, but Ken Holland seems to be absolved of any wrongdoing and continues to run the team. To make things worse, the media in Edmonton refuse to hold Ken Holland accountable. It's always some young 20-something-year-old player or the coach's fault. But not Ken Holland. He's a Hall of Famer, don't you know? Jay Woodcroft had the best winning percentage as head coach in Oilers history and only got to coach 20 more regular season games than Dallas Aikens. Let that sink in for a minute. Dallas freaking Aikens almost got the same amount of leash as Jay Woodcroft. Now, I did make another video talking about Woodcroft and some of his flaws, but the decision to fire him already shows how panicked the front office is at the Oilers' slow start to the season. This is a desperation move from a desperate general manager doing everything that he can to shift blame away from himself. Ken Holland has handcuffed this team's salary cap, so they cannot acquire help without a contract going back the other way. The coaches cannot hold players accountable because they're playing with a shortened roster due to the cap issues created by Ken Holland. Holland has also given Darnell Nurse and Jack Campbell a combined $14.25 million against the cap. He has drafted zero, I'm saying zero, impact NHL players since he took over as GM in 2019. The team is still in need of a true number one starting goaltender. They have no depth on right wing. They have no depth on right defense. Holland had $30 million of cap space to spend in the summer of 2022, and he blew his load on an aging Evander Kane, a horrific Jack Campbell, plus signing Yamamoto and Pugliarvi, who are no longer even with the team, and he did nothing to address the holes on the roster that have existed since he took over almost five years ago. The only reason this team has seen any sort of regular season or playoff success under his tenure is because McDavid and Dreisaitl have gone nuclear the past two seasons and have put up historic scoring in the regular season and playoffs just to give the team a chance at winning. Well, now the scoring has slumped, the team is losing. The analytics say the team is going to regress back to the mean in a positive way, but will it be enough to make the playoffs? Only time will tell. Anyways, guys, that's all the energy I have left for today. Let me know what you think. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.